Hello. How we doing, folks? Good to be here on a Thursday evening. Um, how we doing? How's it going? How's everyone's day been? My day's been really good. I actually got the oil changed in my car, which I was excited to finally do. Um, I picked up some Chipotle for dinner, um, which was wonderful. Um, uh, what else? Oh, before we get started, I wore this shirt. I love this shirt. It's my Super Smash Bros. Melee shirt, which I think is super sick. If you're my age, Super Smash Bros. Melee is like a holy grail video game. Um, even though I'm pretty sure um, this like design was just ripped from like the Japanese guidebook. And the reason I think that is because I read a little bit of Japanese. I'm learning it. This here, I, I cannot point to it. There we go. <laughs> it says, Gaidobuku. <laughs> so I'm like, that probably means guidebook. Um, which is funny. But yeah, love this shirt. Perfect uh, <laughs> Twitch streaming shirt. Uh but here in Pokemon Yellow, where we last left off, we were making our way to Victory Road, which I am really excited about. Honestly, this part of the game I consider to be just like so epic and don't jump over this ledge. This ledge is always very dreaded because so many people always accidentally jump over it and you have to go back around. Um... But yeah, it's so cool that, like, that route where you fight your rival at the beginning of the game, it actually leads here to the Pokemon League. Listen to this music. Oh, wait, no, it's not the music yet. Um, <laughs> I went too early. Oh, that is the Boulder Badge. Go right ahead. And there's, like, a bunch of checkpoints as you walk up to Victory Road, and it's so epic. And you could, can, in theory, like, walk up further and further, but there's all these checkpoints that make sure you have every badge. And as you can see, we have every badge. So I'm excited. Here we go. Mmm. Epic. Oh. Yeah, so sick. I love this music so much. Um, so this guy's checking for our Thunder Badge. Even though this little path is just like kind of weird, they make this whole thing like weirdly labyrinthine. Um, for no reason, like you could have just gone right where I just came from to over here, but it's okay. The Rainbow Badge. That's from defeating Erica. So here we have some water, so I'm gonna pop our Max Repel. And I don't know if, I don't remember if surfing ruins the music. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this music's far less epic. And I love how this person is just sitting here in the water, waiting, just waiting to see if someone has a soul badge. And this is also like another cool checkpoint because you need surf to get through here. Here we got another swimmer. This person's probably really pruney. And the epic is back. And then you have some grass here. Like, you can catch Mankey and Primeape, and I think, like, Nidorino here. Nothing too crazy. Um, so we have one more guy. Oh, two more, actually. Um, and then there's just one more little patch of grass right there. And, like, this whole area is a mix of, like, official Pokemon League, like, buildings, I guess? It's kind of weird. And then like some natural stuff as well. You can pass here, only have to have the Earth Badge. Oh, that is the Earth Badge. So now we have passed through all the checkpoints and we can enter Victory Road. And yeah, Victory Road is weird because it looks like it's like a man-made thing. It's like a building, 
but you go in and it's definitely a cave. Um, but I just freaking love, like, walking up that route. It feels so, like, epic and, like, end of the game um, to me. So here we are in Victory Road. I actually, I have a rappel up, but I actually don't know what the levels of the wild Pokemon are in here. We might have to, like, um, just have to run into some wild Pokemon. It depends. Oh, I need to do strength. Uh, because one thing that happens here in Victory Road is that we have to do these strength puzzles. And we haven't really used strength much in the run. I don't think so. Like, we got that rare candy after we uh, helped the warden. But strength is... Um, here in Victory Road is really, like, the main reason we use strength. Um, you can also use it in the Seafoam Islands um, to unlock Articuno, which is the bird that we saw. You see, here's a wild Pokemon that's above our level. But luckily, it's a flying type Zubat, and we're just going to smoke it. Um, and yeah, again, we are pretty underleveled. And as you can see, now that I put the boulder on that switch, that little white spot is gone and we can now pass through here. Um, but it looks like our repel is still like warding off most things. So we can go up here. Um, the way this is set up is that it only lets you get one of these items. All right, we got some Annoying wild Pokemon shenanigans. I'll probably not even bother putting up repels. Something I... Oh, no, I'll leave Eve in front. Because Eve will be able to run from pretty much anything. So it kind of makes you make a choice between which item you want to get. But if we leave this level, then the strength puzzle will reset. Um, and then we can come back and get that other item. I'm going to try to fight every trainer in here. Um... I might not do it all in one go. I might, like, make it all the way through and then come back and fight them. But I do want to fight everybody. Um, and I can use some of the potions that I've saved up. <laughs> and we've got these cool trainers in here. Um, oh, I got rid of Double Kick. Oh, that actually would have come in handy. Oh, well. Thunderbolt is just as well. Um, but how was everyone's day? Uh, my day was pretty good. Oh, that's a Gen 1 miss right there. Um, and for those of you who don't know, in Generation 1, even moves with 100% accuracy like Thunderbolt have a 1 in 256 chance of just missing for no reason. Um, which is always fun and hilarious when it happens um but my day was good had a pretty good day of work nothing too crazy um we had a couple kids out today so that you know that always makes things a little easier uh we'll use dragon rage okay this nine tails does not want to win it seems but yeah all these oh thanks for the extra cash all these cool trainers have um you know, cool, strong Pokemon. That's why they're cool trainers. Oh, hello. I did not know that guy was there. Or I forgot he was there. Ivysaur, not a great matchup for our Jolteon, so let's go into Copter. Oh, I love the way Razor Leaf looks in this game. It looks pretty novel. Yeah, that's a critical hit. Razor Leaf, it's, see, that's not even very effective. Razor Leaf has a very high critical hit ratio, which again, is why we waited to evolve our wife. Luckily, Copter's also very strong. I'll probably be popping a lot of potions. War Turtle, here is where we can use our girl Eve. Love that sprite. It's great. Um, but yeah, after... I, after work, I went ahead and picked up 
a good old ice cap from Tim Hortons. It was so good. Um, then I came home for a little bit, went out and changed my oil and got my Chipotle. So I did not work out today, so I'm, I'm feeling great. Um, cause I usually, I usually work out four days a week. Um, I don't have like a crazy schedule or anything, but I've always tried to really keep myself motivated to sticking to a schedule. Um, here, I'm going to go back out to Eve. Um, knock out this Charizard, hopefully. There we go. One shot, baby. Charizard Sprite is also great. He's just a stately little gentleman. He's like... So funny. And so lovely. Um, okay. Are you level 40? Yes, you are. We'll put Copter in front. Um, so we have a good amount of potions here. Once we get back to the... Pokemon League, I will do some heavy loading up on, uh, whatchamacallit, potions. But, see, there's that little whited out spot there, and you can't get through it. So, we gotta do this little strength puzzle. Oh, and the other big strength puzzle in the game I was explaining earlier is the Seafoam Islands. And we kinda teased going in there. Is there a hidden item there? No, there's not. Oh, hello. Um, and there's actually a really cool strength puzzle there. It's really, um, it's really cre- oh, hi. These people be surprising me. Um, uh, this is a good matchup for Copter. We'll stay in on these fighting Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I, I think the Seafoam Islands is one of, like, the cool, unique puzzles. Honestly, like, in the franchise. Especially, like, for the early franchise. Um, it was a really cool idea, what they did in there. And once we get to the Pokemon League, I don't know if we'll get to it this stream or not. But I would like to show you all Seafoam Islands, just to see what's going on in there. Just like we went to... Uh, <laughs> see Zapdos and got completely clapped. Um, I'm pretty sure Zapdos is still there. I'm pretty sure if you lose to the legendary bird, they'll still stay there. Anybody who's watching this in the comments, let me know if I'm wrong. Because um, I very well could be. Um, but uh, one other thing I'm about to show you once we defeat this here Black Belt. Yeah, all these guys have a lot of machops and machokes. If you look up here, there's another bird right there. Well, what is that? That is actually Moltres. Um, it is the third legendary bird. I'm just gonna save here for the heck of it. Um, and they just kind of stuck Moltres in Victory Road. It's not really a great place for it to be. I don't really kn think they knew where to put it. Um, so they just put it here. Because Zapdos and Articuno have, like, a really cool kind of, like, dedicated spot to be. Um, ooh, Mega Kick! Um, hmm, who do I want to teach this to? I could teach it to Boney. I could teach it to Titus. Makes a lot of sense on Titus. He, he has Mega Kicks, man. Um, but his moveset's honestly looking pretty good. Ah, Sky Attack. Sky Attack is a really cool move. Um, I might teach it to Copter. We'll wait. We'll wait and see. Um, cause Sky Attack is a move, it's not very good. It's really powerful. The only thing is, it's a flying type move. It takes a turn to charge. So that's really annoying and kind of dumb. Um, oh, the Psychic will hurt a little bit. Ooh, Special Fell as well. Hate to see it. Oh, wow. Okay, let's me get a free hit on the old Hypno. Oh, hi. Oh yeah, I think this guy's just gonna keep swapping out. That's kind of the thing with these jugglers. Ooh, okay. That should kill him. There we go. But yeah, Sky Attack. It is a two-turn move, which just, it's just not good, you know? 
Um, uh, da, ba, this is probably... Copter's probably our best bet here. Even with my special lowered. Um, Kudapra! Uh, well, let's move out of here. Let's go to Bunny. Hit this bad boy with an earthquake. This will really hurt. Don't kill me. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's a two-turn move. It's like Solar Beam. It's like, it's the most powerful grass move in the game, but it's like... <sighs> at some point, it's just not worth it. You'd rather just be able to do your damage on that one, on that first turn, and just not have to worry about it. Wow, this Kadabra is fast! Outspeeding my Gyarados. Okay, good. Don't disable my bike, because that's what I just used. Oh, no. Um... So yeah, even, like, I'm not really planning on catching Articuno, but I just want to show you where it is, honestly. Because it's a really cool dungeon that this game has to offer that's completely optional. Um, you do not have to go in there. Um, yeah, I'm going to be using a lot of my potions in here. We'll restock. And if all else fails, we can sell some TMs that we're not using. Hello, Mr. Guy. Oh, I skipped it. Um, let's get that sleep powder going. It's really not wanting to hit. Really not wanting to hit. That's just great. That's just wonderful. All right, we finally got a lucky miss. Um, and now you're using... Jeez. This Persian is on fire. But now that uh, our journey is kind of winding down here in Pokemon Yellow, I really can't believe it. Um... What's everyone's favorite gym leader? You know, I said my favorite is Koga, even though he kind of sucks in this game. Um, who's your favorite gym leader that we've encountered so far? Um, all right. All right, wifey. We'll use my super potions first. There's a lot of TMs in here. Um, that I'm afraid are gonna muck up our bag. Okay, there we go. If we have a rock Pokemon, I really want a rock Pokemon. Because that will kind of give a free heal for my wife. That is not what I wanted to see. Ah, repel. <laughs> I'm try- <laughs> Guys, I'm trying to run into something. Because if I run into, like, a Graveler or an Onix here, I can just hit a Mega Drain with my wife and just not have to... There we go. Geodude will do the trick. I can just hit a Mega Drain and it'll kill this Geodude and heal my, heal my wife back up to full, pretty much. Yeah, that'll do. Was it worth it? Probably not. Um, but yeah, my favorite gym leader is Koga. I think he's super dope. His team in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee actually gets to shine, which I love and appreciate. Ooh, Substitute. We haven't seen Substitute yet. Um, this is a pretty cool, like, kind of rare move. Um, basically, the Pokemon sacrifices some of its HP to set up, like, a dummy. Um, and sometimes it can break on the first turn, but... If you can set it up to, like, where you it doesn't get broken that easily, Substitute can be super, super powerful and useful. Um, I remember uh, my cousin, who we're very close, he's kind of like a brother. Um, he was in a tournament, a 
uh, Pokemon battling tournament. And he... What is TM17? Submission. This is an interesting move. It's a fighting move. We could teach it to Titus. We could teach it to Bony. Just like Mega Kick. Um, we'll think on it. Because Submission... It's the most powerful fighting move in the game. Um... But the problem with it is it doesn't have great accuracy and it damages the user. It's kind of like takedown. Um, but, you know, we'll think about it. <laughs> I might just roll with rolling kick and double kick. Just a bit more reliable moves. Um, all right, here we have Parasect. This is a terrible matchup for my wife. And again, a lot of times with grass, oh, I hate Spore. Spore is a um, sleep move that always hits, um, which is very powerful. And I think one of the reasons they gave it to Parasect here is because Parasect is actually a pretty weak Pokemon, but it gave it a really good move that only it can learn in this game, which is super cool and a great little design uh, piece. Um... Dugong is part ice, which could smoke my wife once again. So we're going to go with Jolteon. Um, oh yes, as I was saying, my cousin was in a Pokemon tournament, and he had a Tyranitar, which is not a Pokemon that exists in Generation 1. Um, it's one of my favorite Pokemon ever, but it's not in this game. Um, he had a Tyranitar, that new substitute, and that was like he rode that thing to like a top three finish, I think, in this tournament, which was kind of a big deal. He actually won this thing called a Game Boy Micro, and it's it was like a Game Boy Advance um, back in the day. This game that we're playing now, Yellow, is for the Game Boy Color. Um, oh, I didn't go back and get, back, get that item. Uh, we'll see if I need it. I don't think I need it. Um, but, uh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> please let me run, thank you, um, but he, yes, he won this Game Boy Micro, it is a Game Boy Advance, but it's, like, really small, um, and he won, like, this special, like, Pikachu-themed Game Boy Micro, and I'm pretty sure that if he, like, never opened it, never played it, it would actually, like, kind of be worth some money now um that is not the case he totally opened it and totally played it but i think it is still pretty rare and i don't think it's worth nothing i think it's a, a really cool piece of like pokemon nintendo history that game boy micro so that's super cool um and a really good piece of bragging rights um for those of you who are very familiar with Pokemon. It was it was like Gen 3 era this happened. It was, I think he did it on Ruby and Sapphire. Um, I mean, it might have been Emerald or whatever, but... Um, but Cloyster is part ice, just like Dugong, but it's special... Uh, mm, its special defense is usually its weakness, but maybe not so much in this game. Okay, good. We got that critical hit. Love to see it. Because it could have just smoked us with an Ice Beam or Aurora Beam. Um, Arcanine. Another bad <laughs> matchup for the old ball and chain. Just kidding. I love you. If you're watching this. Um... But yeah, takedown. Takedown's not a great move. There's another move called Double Edge that is exactly like takedown, just a little stronger. Um, Roar, fun fact, is another move that doesn't work in this generation. It would just like force my Marowak out of the battle and just force a different Pokemon to come in. Um, and it's also used to like flee from wild Pokemon battles. Uh, Max Revive, that is an excellent item. use this Geodude to replenish my health once again. Um, let me go ahead and hit this Max Repel. Now that everybody's up to 40, I'll switch back to Eve. 
because Eve is definitely faster than my wife. And when I get into these scenarios where I have to run from something, I'll be far more equipped to be able to. Ah, uh, yes, I can't go that way yet. So I gotta push this boulder pretty much all the way over here to the left, if I recall. Um, Gen 1 Victory Road is never something I am very good at remembering how to get through. I never liked this one as much as um, some of the other ones. Uh, but here, is there a trainer here? No, there isn't. Is there a hidden item here? No, there's not. Huh. Don't I look foolish? Um, but yeah, here's this guy. I don't remember what he has. Um, we'll start. We'll start with Keith Angel. He's probably one of our more versatile mons. Ba, ba, da, 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 ah, good choice by me. Excellent matchup here. But uh, if you go through this door, it will help you uh, get to Moltres. Ah, hate that. There we go. Let's see that flinch. Ooh, or a critical hit. That'll do as well. That'll do as well. Lick a tongue, we're staying in. Here's this guy again. I don't like his vibe. Don't like his vibe. You probably really... The creepy guy hitting on the girls at the party. You're problematic with the tongue. Anyway, he's dead now. He can't hurt us anymore. Um, so we beat this here Pokemaniac. And here's Moltres. Um, we're probably not going to battle it. It's a fire bird. It looks like a rubber chicken with fire on it. Um, no more room for items. Okay, so I might just teach Pokemon some moves just for the heck of it. What is this one? Explosion. Um, okay, no one on our squad can learn it. I don't care about it. I'm going to go ahead and toss it. Fun fact, if you toss something, you just get rid of the item forever and you can't get it back. And it's fine in this case. I don't care about the TM for explosion. This guard spec I'm probably going to end up tossing. Um just because I never use the items in battle. Um, what I am going to do here is I'm going to pop this shortcut to get us back to the first floor here. Um, uh, we'll just use an ice beam to destroy this Geodude. So we can get back to this item that I was talking about. Um and strength. Um, one thing in later games, you don't have to go to the menu like that to use strength every time. You can just, like, basically talk to the rock and it'll ask, like, oh, you can move this rock. Do you want to use strength? Yes, rare candy. That's a great item. Yeah, what I like to do with rare candies, we have nine right now. I just kind of like to stack them throughout the game and then just use them all at the end, um, right before we're about to face the Pokemon League. Because what it does is it just raises your level by a stage. And, oh, I miscalculated because we're going to have to do this strength puzzle again. Um, it's not the biggest deal. We didn't move that much yet. Um, but, uh, sorry, I'm using speed up to get us kind of back where we were. Good old Onyx. I can just, one just drop of water and you just... Dive head first at the ground, basically. Um, but what was I saying? Oh, yes, rare candies. Um, I always like to use them when my Pokemon are at a higher level because. Um, okay, we'll get to that ladder soon enough. Um, ah, yes, okay. Here we are. We'll do this so we can. get to the next area. I wanted to show y'all where Moltres was. Um, 
And then you gotta push this rock all the way down to the left. We'll speed through that a little bit. But rare candies are always good to use when your Pokemon are at a higher level. Because what it does is it raises your Pokemon's level by one stage. If you use a rare candy on a level 5 Pokemon, that's kind of silly. Because it does not take a lot of experience to raise a Pokemon from level 5 to level 6. But it does take way more experience, way more experience points, yes, um, to raise a Pokemon from level 45 to 46. Um, so using your rare candies as late as possible kind of like is the best value technically. So moving that rock all the way to the left lets us go through here. Um, ba, 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 ba. And Keith Angel can just one-shot these rock types. Um, so we have a couple more trainers here. Uh, we actually have just a few more trainers. I'm really trying to get through all these trainers in one go. I think this guy has a lot of Pokemon, though, so I'm going to go ahead and save. Um, I don't anticipate losing to this person. Oh, no, he's fine. Kingler. Look at that sprite. Oh, I love it. Oh. Like... I'll get you. Um, but Kingler is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, by the way. Um, and its sprite in yellow is so sick. Oh, guillotine. Very scary. Um, that is a one-hit KO move. It's a lot like Fissure, like I described. Um, it has a 30% chance of just killing you in one hit. Um, Fissure, uh, guillotine, and horn drill are the three moves in this game that basically act the same. They can be one-hit KO moves. And they're not very likely to hit, but they are, you know, an insta-kill, basically. And in Generation 3, they add the move Sheer Cold, which does the same thing. It's an ice-type move. Um, nice shot, Eve. Blastoise. A blast tortoise. You know, see, this is what Squirtle's final form is. I don't think this is the best sprite for Blastoise. I still kind of like it. It's got personality, like all the yellow sprites do. It's lovely. Um, da -do, da -do. Bite. Please. Please. You're nothing compared to my wife. She's a beautiful, powerful lady. And I'll just continue to say it, because it's true. Oh, uh, but what were we talking about? We were talking about rare candies and the usefulness of rare candies and just nerdy stuff like that. Um, but we're starting to get toward the end of Victory Road here. Um, this is probably, like, the biggest dungeon of the game. It's kind of like the last... Um, Kind of like the last hurrah, so to speak. Um, Keith Angel's not a great matchup, but I do have this good old Ice Beam that should knock out a Bellsprout. Oh, you're turning my wife against me. Oh, I think this trainer has... Yes, she has a Bellsprout, a Weeping Bell, and a Victory Bell. Oh! Oh my gosh. You're making me kill my wife. I feel like that's a big trope in movies where it's always just like oh, your loved one has turned against you or like an illusion of your loved one has turned against you and it's the hardest thing you have to do but you have to kill them um there she is beautiful powerful lady On Science Today, the kids actually watched a little video about Venus fly traps, which I found interesting. I hate to see sleep powder. Um, but that's why we got this beautiful little Poke Flute. Okay, good. It didn't soft lock us like that Poliwhirl did out in the ocean. Um, but yeah, that's a big that's a big trope. And yeah, we watched something about Venus flytraps today in science, which is pretty cool. You see, we would love to go through there where that boulder is. Um, okay, there we go. 
couldn't escape, but it still blocks the way. We can't get through there. So what we have to do is we have to push this rock down through this hole, and then we jump down the hole. Whee! Whee! And then Yahoo! If you're Mario. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Titus. So then we move this boulder all the way to the left onto this switch. And then we can go through there where that white spot once was. Pretty sure we fought this guy already. Gary also came through here. Oh, good to know. Um, I believe there's one more trainer at the end, or maybe not. No, that is it. We found a hidden full restore under this rock. And here, we have made it through Victory Road, ladies and gentlemen, in one pass. Not bad. Didn't even use that many potions, honestly. Um, well, here's something I'm going to do. Um, whoopsie. Um, I'm just going to use this opportunity just to grind Gyarados and um, Marowak up one more level. Just to get him on par with the rest of the squad. Because um, I think Marowak was my only Pokemon at level 40 um, when we walked in here. And again, in this game, we haven't really had a lot of trouble, especially having a really strong team. Um, ooh, trying to learn Hydro Pump. We're actually not going to learn Hydro Pump. Um, it is the strongest water move. Um, and something that has been kind of like a common refrain from me in this game and in Pokemon games in general is that I don't really value learning like the strongest uh, move of each type. I just want to have like the strongest, most balanced move. Um, because Hydro Pump, again, doesn't have very good accuracy compared to Surf, which is still really strong. Not as strong, but it has perfect accuracy. Um, and that like balance is what makes it and Thunderbolt and Ice Beam and Flamethrower the best moves in the game. Um, whereas a move like Fire Blast or um, uh, Hydro Pump are way more like Feast or Famine. Um, so our boy Boney learns one more signature move. There we go. 41. Easy. Um, oh! Ah, it's not it. Thrash! Thrash is a cool move. It's a strong normal type move, and it, and it attacks two or three turns in a row. Um, its only downside is that it um, confuses you once you're done using it, which, excuse me, it's a good early game move, but maybe not for now, but it's fun. I just taught it to Boney just for the heck of it. Um, but yes, in other games, you'll find yourself like grinding wi on wild Pokemon just to increase your levels a lot more than I feel like you will in this game, because there's still some trainers we haven't fought. Um, and we are sitting pretty. We have this weird little statue maze, Indigo Plateau, the ultimate goal for trainers, Pokemon League, HQ. Oh, my repels effect wore off. And here we are. It's indigo. It's blue. Indigo for the indigo plateau. Uh, we're going to pop a save right here. Um, so here we are. We are at the Pokemon League, gang. Um, very exciting stuff. Let's see here. I'm probably going to deposit some of these um, TMs. I'll deposit the guard spec. I'm not going to use the guard spec. I probably could have sold it. Oh, well. These TMs I'm probably not going to use. I think it was Submission, Sky Attack. Powerful moves, but have really big drawbacks. I would rather use just use Fly on my Aerodactyl and things like that. Um, I'm going to keep Fire Blast because I might teach that to maybe Bony or Aerodactyl just for fun. Um... Uh, do I have anything here I want? Oh, we have our Dome Fossil. Oh, we revived our old Amber to get Aerodactyl, but the Dome Fossil here is the fossil that we got way a long time ago in Mount Moon, if you recall. And this will actually turn into the Pokemon Kabuto, um, which is kind of like a, like a Trilobite-type 
looking Pokemon. Um, and then it evolves into Kabutops, which is a super sick like thing with sickles on its hands, and it's really cool. Um, so Kabutops is sick. Uh, we... I probably won't need those max ethers, because I think we have regular ethers. These are very valuable items. Again, because they restore your power points, and you only get, like, a very small amount of them in the game. Um, and, yeah. I think what we're going to do here is we'll use our PP up. Yes, we'll use our PP up. And we want to use this on a move that we use a lot. Um... So what I'm actually going to use it on is Eve. Um, Cause really Eve's, really the only attacking move Eve is using is Thunderbolt. Um, so I'm going to, going to give the PP up to Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt's power points were at 15, but when you use the PP up, it becomes 18. Um, so it gives you three extra uses of Thunderbolt, which is super great. Um, I don't anticipate power points being a huge issue in this, uh, run through the Elite Four, but we at least still have the, you know, uh, those two ethers, because they will, um, replenish the power points of one move by ten. Um, max ethers will fully replenish the power points of one move, elixirs will replenish the power points of all your moves by 10. And I don't know if we have any elixirs. I might have just put them in the box if we do. Um, so we actually don't have a ton of money here. Um, not quite as much as I would like. We ha definitely have a lot of revives, which is good. Um, max potions I don't really care about because usually hyper potions will heal all that you need. Um, so right now, we're really just making preparations for the League. So we have 24 revives. That should be plenty. Um, we have 21 full heals. That'll do it. We have... How many full restores? We have nine. Let's buy one more full restore. Um, because what a full restore does is that it fully um, heals your hit points. And it also heals any status that you might have. Um, we'll just get one more revive to get us up to 25. Um, and then I'm actually going to go off-site somewhere here to pick up some Hyper Potions and Super Potions. Um, because it's useful to have the different kinds of potions. Um, just to conserve a little bit of money. Um, and not use, like, all of your... Um, just make sure you're getting, like, the good value for your money, once again. Um, and I'm actually going to fly somewhere to get Super Potions. I think they have them in Lavender Town, for sure. Um, because each Mart has a little bit of a different selection, you know. As you get to each town, um, the selection will get a little bit better. So I had nine Super Potions. I'll grab six, just have 15. And Super Potions heal, uh, 50. HP. Um, technically, the best bang for your buck, I believe, are lemonades, because I think they cost $200 less than a super potion, but heal 60 HP. I think that's what they do. It's something like that. But, uh... <laughs> so, something I'm going to check now... Um, yeah, we're really just doing... Okay, so 3,000 experience to level 42. Let's see, 5,000. What I'm checking to see is how far away each Pokemon is from leveling up. Um, because if they're close to leveling up, I don't want to use rare candies on them. Because, again, that's just kind of like a waste of a rare candy. Um, and none of them really are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one rare candy on every member of the squad just to get everybody up to level 42 um, and we're definitely not going to take on the Pokemon League this stream um, 
we'll probably we'll probably do that next stream honestly um something that we can do i think we might have time yeah i'll go ahead and do it um i want to show you the seafoam islands um i might be getting a little bit ahead of myself because i don't exactly remember how to get through here um but i just want to show you where articuno is um and what am i doing i need to surf ba -da -da -da. yeah because we're about 45 minutes in we'll see if i can do this in about 10 15 minutes or so so you come in here um, it's this cave, it's kind of like an icy cold cave, um, and you can catch Pokemon like, I believe you can catch Pokemon like Slowbro and Jinx, um, so, yes, we can surf here, and unlike Victory Road, our repels actually work here, because the Pokemon are lower level. So what happened was, I'm not touching anything. The game is like driving me away. And you're like, what's happening? It won't let me get on that uh, little ladder. Um, so what happens here, I just found a hidden Ultra Ball. So we'll go up here, we'll surf up here. And there's this little sign that says, danger, fast current. So what you have to do in, holy crap. Okay, wow, I spoke too soon. There are four, level 45 Zubats down here. That's insane. Um, so let's get Eve so we can run from everything. Um, so what you have to do is you have to... Boulders might change the flow of water. What you have to do is push these boulders down into the water to uh, stop the current, basically, which is super cool. I think it's so awesome. It's like a really fun, unique little thing. Um, a nugget, that's great. We can sell that, maybe buy another full restore or two. So here I'm just kind of wandering around. I don't really know where I am right now. Okay, great. It's kind of a maze, um, but this is definitely a place where you want to be. Um, oh, wow, ooh, a max elixir. That fully heals all of your power points. It's funny that I was just talking about that. Um, so what we got to do is we need to push these boulders here. Um, I think there are some other boulders that you can push to um, change the current. Hold on, let me do this. Got to make sure you don't box yourself into a corner here. But that's the great thing about you can just always exit the floor to like reset the strength boulders so you can redo the puzzle basically. Um, and if we do this, this should stop the current. And if we drop down here, we should drop right into the water right where the current is blocked, I believe. Absolutely. So those two, those two boulders block the current, because what would happen is it would like drag us through that little place underneath where the boulders are. But here is where Articuno is, which I think is so cool for this game to have just kind of like this cool hidden boss in like a completely optional area that has like a cool, unique puzzle that goes with it. Um, because, like, you have Moltres, which is just kind of, like, plopped into Victory Road. Kind of weird. Not very uh, extravagant. Um, and then you have Zapdos, which has its own cool little area in, like, the abandoned power plant. Um, but there's not, like, a puzzle to it. You just kind of walk through it. But this is, like, a cool... It's cool. I've said it's cool a lot. Um, so, for the last thing... Um, I'll try to catch Articuno. Um, we'll see what happens. I think I only have... I don't want to use my Master Ball because I want to save that for something else. We have eight Ultra Balls. It could be like Zapdos and none of them hit. I'm not going to let myself white out again because I don't want to lose all my money. But I just want to show you Articuno. Great cry as well. And again, we saw the sprite earlier. This is one of my favorite sprites in the game. 
that blue, that blue and white, the majestic beast. If you have not watched, kind of like the three classic Pokemon movies were the first one where you've got Mewtwo, the second one where you've got Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno, and the third one where you've got Entei. The second one with the legendary birds is one of my favorite movies of all time. And the other Pokemon that's in that movie is Lugia. And Lugia is my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, so that movie is sick. Pokemon the Movie 2000, it's called. Um, okay. Looking pretty. It's very interesting because Zapdos knows Drill Peck, but Articuno only knows regular old Peck for some reason. Um, it does know Ice Beam, though, which is, again, one of the best moves in the game. Um, here, we're going to Boney. Um, just hit it with a headbutt. There we go. This will kill Boney for sure. Um, okay. So, we'll go into Keith Angel. So, we'll just toss these eight Ultra Balls at it, see if we can catch Articuno. Really, again, I just want to show it to you. Um, but, really, those first three Pokemon, and again, it just keeps missing... It's a really weird mechanic in this game where you can miss the legendary Pokemon. I kind of hate it. Um, but what can you do? And again, I, I still have yet to hit one of these legendary Pokemon on stream. Um, it's kind of like a glitch. It's weird. Um, but maybe when you play yourself, you'll have a little bit better. Oh! Oh, yes! Awesome! And I think what happens... There's a weird thing that happens with the legendary birds in this game. I think what it is, is if the ball is not going to catch it, like if it would have popped out, it just misses. But it only does that for the legendaries. It's really odd. But, hooray! We caught Articuno! Um, very cool. The Freeze Pokemon. A legendary bird Pokemon. It freezes water that is contained in winter air and makes it snow. Um, do you want to give a nickname to Articuno? Absolutely. I'm going to name this Articuno One. Um, because Arctic Uno, Uno, Zapdos, Moltres. Very clever. Pokemon always be punning. So now I'll use this here, escape rope. Oh wow, that took us all the way back here, great. Um, so with that, it's a great way to end off the stream. I really, I was able to do that really quickly actually. Um, so thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for watching this after the fact on YouTube. Thank you so much, give it a like. Um, and if this is your first time experiencing Pokemon Yellow, welcome. That's like one of the reasons I started doing this. I really just wanted to share my favorite games with people because I love video games um, and the magic of video games. It's like a movie you play. It's awesome. And I want more people to experience that. So thank you for watching. And if you're just like a super seasoned Pokemon player and you just have this on in the background, welcome to you as well. Um, hopefully you find me entertaining in some way. Um, but anyway, folks, I hope you all have a good night. I hope you have a good Friday, a good weekend. Um, my spring break is coming up, which I am so excited about. Um, it's not next week, but the week after. Um, and with that, again, goodbye. Thank you. Peace out.